What's up, YouTube family? Welcome to the Linked Up Church online experience. We're so glad that you've chosen to connect with us today. Before we jump into the message, we wanted to let you know that we have a ton of great content for the whole family. We have great videos for your small children in the Little Linkland section, for your kids in the Linked Up Kids section, and relevant services for your teenagers from the plug. We'd love to be a blessing to your whole family, so check out these videos when you can. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you never miss a video from us. Now, let's get started. Hi, I'm Kyler with Linked Up Kids News. Today on Linked Up Kids News, we're going to be doing images. Is it okay if we laugh? Okay. Can you tell me what is in this image right here? I see two foxes. See four sticks. And yeah, that's, that's it. Tell me how many sticks do you see? Four. I see eight. Tell me if you see three, or do you see four, or do you see eight? How many logs do you see? Four. Can you tell me what you see in this line? I see a tiger by trees. I see a tiger, trees, and flowers. I think I see a cheetah. I see trees and like things making up the tiger. Yeah. Yeah, they're all, the leaves are down and there's a tree like that. There's a and tree I see like the, making the, like the yeah, sun making yeah. the tiger's face. Yeah. I think I also see like a, a type of lizard. Can you tell me what you see in this? I see flowers, a panther, three girls. I see girls riding, riding a boat. I see three kids bring up sticks, and I see a panda. Uh, kind of looks like a duck. Uh, can you see a girl at their own or a boat? Take the mirror in your hand and tell me what image you see in that mirror. Tell me about you. What do you see? I see my eyes and my hair. My ears and my hair some stuff. My hair and braids. And me trying my best not to laugh. Uh, ears, nose, hair, and uh, brown eyes. What do you see in you? Pretty what? girl. A pretty girl, yes, you're absolutely right. What else do you see about the pretty girl? Mm. Hair. Good morning, Linked Up. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Online, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for bringing your supply of the Holy Spirit. Worship Center, thank you for coming this morning. Thank you for supporting our babies. Give them another round of applause. They did an excellent job. I am so parents, I am so proud of them. I couldn't be more proud than if they were my own children. Thank you, thank you so much. Well, in case you didn't know, my name is Robin Johnson. I am the director of the children's area here at Linked Up Church. And it is a privilege and an honor to be before you and God this morning. And I want to thank my wonderful pastors, Pastor Gregory and Pastor Trish. If you all did not know, these are the best pastors this side of the universe. Join me in honoring our pastors. If this is your first time visiting Linked Up, please come back so that you can sit under the anointing of Pastor Gregory and Pastor Trish. Trust me, you will be in for 
an anointed word that you will never forget. Well, let's just pray real quick. Casey did a great job. Casey, Casey's parents. Good home, good home. Thank you. Father, we just ask that you send your Holy Spirit to be here with us today. You've already been ushered in. We know your presence is with us. We just want to say thank you for it, Father. Thank you for these services. Thank you for everyone that makes this service go the way that you know that it should go. I would like, Father, also to thank our worship team and all that they do to support us in the ministry. Father, I pray that your word comes forth for your people today and that you will be honored and we will give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' holy, mighty, matchless name, we pray, amen. amen. All right. Have a seat. Everybody have a seat. What were you thinking when you watched the video of the children and their images, their self-image, how they see themselves in Christ Jesus? Did it leave you wondering just a little bit? Who am I? Who have I taught my child to be in Jesus? It lets us know that we need to instill God's character in our children and ourselves. I want you to take a moment. Think about your character, your image in God. What is your image in God? Do you know what your image in God is? Right now, look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor what your image in God is. Take a few minutes and do that. Don't describe what you have on. Don't describe your clothes. Don't describe your family. Describe yourself. Now, how many of you were able to do that? to describe God's image of yourself. I see a few hands out there, but those hands that I do not see, that tells you how do I find out what God's image for me is? How do I describe God's image of me? I have a question that I want you to think about during this whole service. How can I know what my image of God is in me and how can I love some God's image in someone else if I don't know what my image is? You've got to know what God has for you to love God's image in other people. How do you find that out? What do you do? Where do we go? It's with our relationship that we have with our Father. And his word gives us all the information that we need. Let's look at Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Then God said, let us make man in our own image. According to our likeness, let him have dominion over the fish, over the sea, over the birds, the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over everything that creepeth, everything that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. He created him, male and female. He created them and God blessed them. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish, over the sea, over the birds in the air, over all the living things that move on the earth. And God said, I have given you every herb that yields fruit, yields seeds, to you shall be food. Also, every beast on the earth, every bird in the air, every living thing that moves on the earth, which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. 
then God saw everything that he did and he said it was good. That means you are good. Everything that he did, it is good. He gave you dominion over everything. There is nothing in this world that God did not give you dominion over, over your homes, over your finances, over your family, over sickness, over the cares of the world. You have to put them under your feet. God made you to do that. But how do we define an image? The children showed you some images and they described some images. What is an image? Google says an image is a visual representation of something. Dictionary.com said a physical likeness or representation of a person, animal, or thing, photographed, painted, sculptured, or otherwise made visible. Are you a visual image of God? Are you photographed? as an image of God in your life? A mental representation, an idea, something previously perceived in the absence of the original stimulus. This is what they say an image is. But what helps us form images in our minds? How do we get those images? Studies today suggest our personal experiences play a role in what we see in images illusions. Think of your working memory as your mind's eye, a little nugget of data your brain retains for short periods of time. While these memories may only be temporary, only temporarily stored in your brain, they influence your, pre your perception. This means your memories impact how you interpret ambiguous images, which, is ex which explains why people see images differently. Your education, your background, your family background, all of this affects your brain and how you perceive and see images. Your eyes were not playing tricks on you just for fun. Let's look at these pictures right here. Let's test your images to see how quickly your brain can switch between both objects. We'll give them a minute to catch up with us. On the image, do you see a duck? Or do you see a rabbit? What do you see? Look at the lady. Do you see a young lady? Or do you see an old lady? You see, it's not as easy as you think it is. All your life experiences reflect how you see these images. The Bible says, we are made in God's image. This doesn't mean that we look like God because God is an immaterial being. It means we are a person of God. We have a mind, we have a will, emotion. We think, we feel, we have desires. We are a moral being, but God is the essence of morality. God is unchanging. We, on the other hand, are like God in an analogous way. God is mind, emotion, will, as we are. There's no other creature. God did not design any other creature on this earth like us. Amen. We're it. He dropped the mic. He, throw, he threw away the mold. When he formed man, that was it. He said, it's finished and it's good. 
So when you look in the mirror, you have to say, it's finished, this is good. No matter what you're going through in your life, you're made in his image. Look in the Bible. It tells you. Let's look at Psalms 8, 6. You're made, you made him to have dominion over the works of your hand. You have put all things under your feet. That's David in his prayer. Also in Psalms, if you look in Psalms, David said, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. Marvelous are your works. He didn't say you are a little bit good. He didn't say doubt how you look today. He did not say, oh, you don't look good. You're not made good today. You are marvelous. No matter what, you are a marvelous person because you're made in the image of God. If you look with me in Ecclesiastes, he said, he has made everything beautiful and appropriate in his time. He has also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart, a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Yet man cannot find out, comprehend, or grasp what God has done. His overall plan from beginning to end. God had a plan for you from the beginning to the end, from the time that you were formed in your mom's womb. He knew exactly what he had in mind for you. Because God made us in his image, he doesn't see us with physical eyes. Remember when Saul was going to appoint the new king. He had to anoint him. God told him to go to Jesse's house and anoint the king. But Saul was looking with his physical eyes. If you look in 1 Samuel 16, 7, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or his physical statue because I have refused him, for the Lord does not see as man sees. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. God knew that it was David's heart that was going to be king, not Elab. He already knew who was going to be king. But because we only see with our physical eyes and not our spiritual eyes, sometimes we miss the mark. Sometimes we do. How can we fix that? What do we do? We, can we, can't we can't see God's image of us as a reflection in the mirror. We must see his reflection with our spiritual eyes. When you're looking in that mirror, you have to look with spiritual eyes because this that I see right here, I'm not always happy with it. When you look in it, you're not always happy with it. But then when I look at it and I look at God, I look what God has done in this and I look where God has bought this and I see it from a spiritual perspective, it changes my image of myself and it will change your image of yourself. God's stamp of approval is on you. It doesn't matter if you're tall, if you're short, if you're fat, if you're bald-headed, or you have hair. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you are made in God's image. We're not all meant to look exactly the same way. If we were, God would have made us that way. But he didn't. He didn't make us all to look the same. We are not all made the exact way. Take a look at identical twins. They are the same. They're no different to our physical eyes. They look just alike. But God has a unique identity in each one of them. 
Do you know identical twins don't have the same fingerprints? They don't have the same palmer prints. You know, the little lines in your hands. Those are different. God made each identical twin in his image the way he wanted them to be. Even their feet print are different. They're not identical. God has designed his creation in you, in his image. Each image he has for each one of you is different. It's not the same. God values all of his sons and daughters. His image of you is that of royalty because God reigns. And he said, you have dominion over the earth, so you reign as well. Look with me at Psalms 8, 5 through 6. For you have made him a little lower than angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of his hand. You have put all things under his feet. We were made to reflect the glory of God's character. God made us spiritual beings, reflecting his spirit. His spirit is that of love. God is love. He gives us commandments about love. If you'll look with me within Mark 12, 30 and 31, and you must love the Lord your God with your whole, with your all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind, and all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't love yourself, how can you love your neighbor? If you don't love the image God has given you, you can't respect and love your neighbor's image. We can't meet that commandment that God has given us. When we get God's image of us distorted, twisted with the cares of the world or life experiences, we can't reflect his glory. We can't reflect what he wants us to reflect. Sometimes things happen in our lives. We become broken. It's like that mirror. If I dropped it, and broke it, and all the pieces were all over the stage. It's just broken. With our physical eyes, <laughs> that mirror's finished. But God will pick up the pieces and put them all together. He will form an image of you more beautiful than you have ever seen. I look at it this way. He takes that broken heart as an image. He takes that sacrifice. Whatever made you break, he picks it up and he molds it like mosaic art, like a stained glass mirror or a window, and it's reflecting all of his different characters all over you. That image that God put back together that was broken, and we all go through life, and that happens. At a time, I thought I knew who I was. I thought I had my image down. And death came to my husband. I didn't know who I was anymore because for so long, I was robbing the wife. I was broken. I was broken to pieces. I did not know. And God started picking up the pieces. God said, you are my child and I love you. You are a teacher and you do a good job. You are still a mother. You're shining bright as a mother. You are a children's church director. I didn't even know God had that in his plans for me. He picks up the pieces and puts them together and you reflect his glory. You reflect his glory from your brokenness. 
Young people, don't try to find your image on Facebook, on Instagram, on um, TikTok. Thank you. That's not God's image for you. That's his image for someone else. That's not who he designed you to be. God does not make any mistakes. Sometimes we get it distorted. But if you'll go with me to Psalms, we can find out why it should not be. Psalms 139 says, For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully and marvelous made. Are your works from the beginning. God formed you. He knew there's going to be times that your image is broken or you have cracks in your mirror. But if you turn to God, he will put it back together. He will pick up the pieces and he will make you reflect a brand new image. God is the master designer. Your new image will reflect that beautiful mosaic piece of artwork. God turns every broken image into a stained glass of beauty. Then your reflections, your reflections will show others how you are, who you are in God. Your image of God, your reflections. When you have the character of love of God as your image, you will reflect that in your life. Now, we can love God's image in our neighbors that we know, now that we know who we are in God. Reflecting God's image is reflecting God's love. When we can reflect God's love, it's easy for us to serve God, to serve his people. Come on, Linked Up. When we know who we are, we know and love our neighbors, we can connect with them in connect groups. We don't have to go around looking for people to serve on Dream Team because we see each other for who God has made you for and you want to serve in God's kingdom. You want to be connected. When we see the love of God's image in other people, they're going to have serve projects looking for us because we've served so many people with the love of God in our heart that we've conquered all the serve projects. We've been to the nursing homes. We've been to the children's homes. We've helped at the schools. We've helped in our churches. We've helped everywhere. We've served with the love of God because God's character is love. God is a source of your glory. If you are imaging God's reflection, you are serving his people. By focusing on God, you will have your self-worth. God is your image. And you know what? He sent the perfect image for us to follow. His son, Jesus Christ. What better image? Jesus is the best image that God could. It was God's best. He is God's best. And since he is God's best, God sees you when he, he sees Jesus every time he looks at you. Just think about it. When God's looking at you, he's seeing Jesus. Little secret. <laughs> I'm so nervous today, but I keep thinking, God's looking at Jesus. God's looking at Jesus. God's looking at Jesus. God's looking at Jesus. And since God is looking at me as if he sees Jesus, then I have no worries because I'm reflecting the image of God, his image that he has for me, that he designed me to be. Go to John 14. He who has seen me has seen the Father. 
Jesus is the only perfect image God knows. We are not perfect. We will have cracks and breaks in our reflection, but we can rejoice because Jesus, the perfect image of God, is what God sees when he sees us. God's character is love. His glory shines through love. Romans, we found, Romans 8, 29. It reads, for those whom he foreknew and loved and chose beforehand, he also predestined to conform to the image of his son and ultimately share in his complete sanctification so that he, the firstborn, the most beloved, honored among believers. Jesus is our example. If you're ever broken, if you're ever lacking who you are, look to Jesus and you're going to reflect God's image of you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to for our children. We want our children to know God's godly character for them. How can we share it with them if we don't know ours? We've got to reflect that image to them so that when we give them a mirror, they can say, say that I am God's child, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, that I am above and not beneath, that I am first and I am not last, that I will conquer anything that I put my hands to because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. There's nothing that I cannot do. There's nothing that you cannot do because you were formed in God's image. And those whom he predestined, he also called. He called those by name. He also justified, declared free of guilt of sin. And those whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly deity. He has taken away your sins. When you look in the mirror, you don't have to worry about your sins. You don't have to worry about your wrongdoings because Jesus came and died on the cross for them. God gave him to us. We are justified in God's glory. We are predestined. We are called. He called us by name. You know, when he calls you by name, if he knows how many hairs are on your head, he knows your name. He knows the image that he has created for you. If you look at Romans 8.30 with me, amplified version. He loved you before time began. You are his masterwork, walking in the path prearranged and made ready for you. God had a path for each one of us, a path that was prearranged. He couldn't tell us because sometimes we're not ready to receive it. We don't know. If Pastor Trish had told me that, she, that God wanted me to be up here, no, he didn't. You wasn't hearing from God. But God knew. And since she knows who she is in God, she knew who I was in God. And I thank you for it. We have to walk in that prearranged path. Because God has called you, he gives you hope. He called you to represent him. You're justified. He transferred his perfect righteousness to everyone he called. This aspect of what Jesus achieved for us on the cross means that it became possible for God the Father to see you and me as him. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
Praise God. Now, she said she was nervous because that was her first time, but I would beg to differ. I would say she did an awesome, wonderful, magnificent. Of course, we give God all the glory, but can we encourage Minister Robin today? Excellent job. Excellent job for her first time ministering on a Sunday morning. That was excellent. Uh, I remember when I graduated from Bible school, all I had to do was the welcome. And, and man, I was sweating like, whoo. And I took one deep breath and tried to say the whole thing. <gasps> and so she did an excellent job. Can I get everyone to stand to their feet? And let's just honor the presence of God. You know, as she was ministering, uh, being made in the image of God, I couldn't help but think of first, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And so whatever your image is of yourself, God can come in and give you a spiritual renovation today where on the inside, everything about you will be fresh and new. But then notice the rest of it is a process. And every day that you spend time in his word, you'll see a new facet of who he is, which will show you a new facet of who you are. And then every day you'll just keep building and building and building and building and becoming a better version of yourself because of who you are in him. And so if you're in this building today or you're watching online, that's God's ultimate invitation to you today is to allow him to give you a fresh image of yourself inwardly first. Nothing. I remember when I got saved, I thought everything was going to change on the outside. Nothing changed on the outside. Everything changed on the inside. And then I began to see everything on the outside differently. So now, while every head is bowed, every eye is closed in prayer, no one moving, no one talking, unless you've been assigned to do so today, will you accept the invitation to allow God to start something fresh and new in your life today by receiving his son as your personal Lord and Savior? So if you're in this building and you're not saved, it would be my heart's desire to pray for you and welcome you in and help lead and usher you in to the family of God. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, Pastor, I'm saved, but I just need to be reminded of my, my image. I've gotten away from God and I want to rededicate today. I want to come back to Christ. I want to make today the first day of the rest of my life by starting over fresh and new. So if that's you today and you want to come back to Christ, I want to pray with and for you. And then finally, my last invitation today is that if you don't have a church home and you believe God is leading you here to Linked Up Church online or in the room, my wife and I, this staff, will be so happy to receive you. We will pray for you every single day of our lives. And every time you come in this building, just like today, we'll make sure that you get the word of God and the word of God only. So now... While every head again is uh, bowed and every eye is closed in prayer, I gave three invitations today. First was to give your life to Christ. Second was to return to Christ. Third was to join Linked Up Church. I desire to pray for you, but I only know that you desire that prayer by the lifting up of your hand. So if you want prayer on any one of those three invitations, would you shoot your hand up in the air right now? Just lift it up. Keep it up as high as you possibly can. I see that hand up in the riser. I see this hand down here on the floor. I see that hand over there to my left. Anyone else, you're saying, Pastor, I want to give my life to Christ. I want a new image on the inside starting today. You're saying, Pastor, I need to come back. I know I need to get my life back right with God. We want to pray for you today. And finally, you need to be connected to a family. And you're saying on the inside, I think this is where God wants me to join. Go ahead and take that next step. So if you didn't raise your hand that first time, but in your heart, you know you should have, just go ahead and shoot it up in the air right now. Remember, God loves you and we love you too. Who else is that? Just lift it up. Keep it up as high as you can. Anyone else? 
All right, if you all would do me one more favor, I see that hand over there. If you raise your hand the first time or the second time where you still didn't raise your hand, but in your heart, you know you should have. Would you just gather up all of your personal belongings, step into the nearest aisleway, come meet me right down here at the front. Linked Up Church, give them a big round of applause as they come. Come on down now in Jesus' name. We can do better than that, Linked Up Church. Let's make them feel real good today. Praise God. Praise God. We certainly praise God for you. Are we waiting on someone else? Are we waiting on anyone else? Just want to be sure. We sure are. Come on, Linked Up Church. Celebrate her. Long walk. She came from the risers. Praise God. Thank you for your obedience today. Thank you for each and every one of you. And online, I have not forgotten about you as well. If it is your heart's desire to give your life to Christ, to return to Christ, or to join Linked Up Church virtually, you can certainly do that. Just text Get Connected to the number on your screen, then follow the instructions. I'm getting ready to take two, take care of two of those invitations right here at the altar. So if you're giving your life to Christ or you're coming back to Christ, I want you to repeat this prayer along with me. Everyone here at the front, just lift up one hand towards heaven because that's where your help ultimately comes from and repeat this after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died, rose from the grave, and he is alive right now. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me now. As a result of what I've confessed with my mouth, what I believe in my heart, I am right now born again, and all my sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Linked Up Church, celebrate these beautiful people. Great decision today. If you all would, look right to your left, my right. See that young lady with that Bible? That's Minister Beryl. Just follow her right now. She's going to show you from the Word of God, more specifically, what you came down to receive. Come on, make them feel real good again as they're heading out. Online, I just want to remind you once again, if you prayed that prayer sincerely from your heart, just text get connected to the number on the screen. If all you can do is just type in, I prayed that prayer, I gave my life to Christ, I rededicated, I desire to join, just type it in. Someone will see it and respond accordingly. Also, if you're in the... Thank you so much for watching our online service. We certainly don't take that for granted. And if you enjoyed today's message and you want to get connected with us, we encourage you to become a part of our online community. That's right. And you can do that by subscribing to our YouTube channel, sharing this video with a friend and following us on social media. Don't forget to meet us right here on this channel every Sunday for our services. If you desire to help us reach more people just like yourself and advance the kingdom of God, then click the Give button now. This will allow us to connect more people to God, their families, their purpose, and their communities. Thank you again for watching our service on today, and we'll, we'll see, see you next week. week.